Good evening again at the start of another week and you're very welcome as you join us for praying the Psalms in Lent. Tonight we're going to be looking together at Psalm 69 and we're going to be using that as a springboard to pray for uh, ourselves and for our world. So if you have a Bible or a Bible app, you may want to get that now. There is also a link with this video for you to uh, look at tonight's psalm as well. But to begin, as we do each night, we're going to light a candle together. A deliberate act that reminds us that Jesus, the light of the world, comes to shine in the darkness of our lives and of our world. So let's take a moment to pause as we enter God's presence. As I enter prayer now, I pause to be still, to breathe slowly and to recenter my scattered thoughts upon the presence of God. Dear Father, as I offer myself to you in this moment, help me to turn away from my own small self-centered view of the world. And through your word and your Holy Spirit, I invite you to Show me your view of me and the world. And I ask you to help me respond to the world and the people around me with your compassion. Amen. I wonder, have you uh, ever been uh, so publicly um, passionate about um, Jesus? Have you ever been passionate for Jesus and your faith to an extent that it has resulted in uh, maybe others, um, maybe even other churchgoers teasing, mocking, scorning or even opposing you? Or maybe have you ever yourself scoffed at an enthusiastic worshipper who maybe isn't as restrained as you are and derided them uh, as happy clappy? Uh, for example, uh, quite a derogatory phrase, I think. Of course, there can be a right and a wrong time and place to express passion for Jesus. And wisdom is to be found in knowing the difference. But sometimes our love for God that, that demands a particular action must overcome our fear of what others might think uh, or do if we want to honour him. And it's not about whether we are an introvert or an extrovert. Jesus made us the way we are and he loves us the way we are. Whatever personality type we are, there will be occasions for all of us where we will either need to restrain our desire to express ourselves in a certain way out of love for others, or break our own self-restraint or the restraint of others out of love for God. King David was a deeply thoughtful and passionate lover of God. He wasn't afraid to be exuberant in his praise and worship, though others occasionally mocked him for it. You may recall uh, the occasion or the incident that uh, when he was mocked by his own wife uh, in 2 Samuel chapter 6. Uh, his wife, who plainly thought her husband uh, lacked decorum uh, for his worshipping by dancing publicly in the street, and that in just a vest, when as king he led the procession carrying the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. Listen again to the exchange that took place when David got home. When David returned home, Michal came out to meet him and said, 
how the king of Israel has distinguished himself today, going around half naked in full view of the slave girls of his servants, as any vulgar fellow would. David said to Michal, It was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone from his house when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people Israel. I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this, and I will be humiliated in my own eyes. You see, humiliation for the right reason is an honour. As Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. In this psalm before us uh, tonight, David loves God so much that it feels like uh, anyone uh, insulting God is insulting him. It's painful for him to hear people blaspheming God. He takes it personally. The insults of those that insult you fall on me, he says. And David uh, writes, zeal for your house consumes me in verse nine. He was so passionate about God's house because that was the symbolic place of God's presence with his people. The message translation explains the zeal he expresses in, in this verse, because I'm madly in love with you. These words are quoted by uh, the disciples of Jesus when he cleanses the temple, as John records it in, in his gospel in chapter two. Out of zeal for God's house, Jesus drove off those who were trying to profit uh, from a place of worship, taking advantage of those who wanted to draw near to God. Today, God's house, the new temple, is Christ and his body, his church. Now, there's nothing wrong with being passionate uh, about church. And I think that's something to remember as we get ready to regather for corporate worship on Sundays in a few weeks' time. And whether you're part of Mavilla Abbey Church or another local expression of church, because we know that there are people who are, are tuning in to these, these broadcasts from other places, wherever you are, can I encourage you to be zealous to see God's name honoured where you take part? Whether it's expressed in passion in worship, enthusiasm for the talks, fervour in prayer, a generosity in giving, an amazing welcome for every new person. Passion is inspiring and infectious. We need more mad love in the church today. We're going to read Psalm 69 now and reflect on David's experience of humiliation for his passion for God. I'm not going to read all of it, just to verse 18, as the whole thing will would take five minutes to read. Uh, maybe you can finish it afterwards. But as we read, let's allow the Holy Spirit to probe our own hearts, to speak to us about our passions or maybe our lack of passion. And may these words uh, lead us in prayer for others. Psalm 69. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I have come into the deep waters. The floods engulf me. I'm worn out calling for help. My throat is parched. My eyes fail looking for my God. Those who hate me without reason outnumber the hairs of my head. Many are my enemies without cause. Those who seek to destroy me. I'm forced to restore what I did not steal. You, God, know my folly. My guilt is not hidden from you. Lord, 
the Lord Almighty. May those who hope in you not be disgraced because of me. God of Israel, may those who seek you not be put to shame because of me. For I endure scorn for your sake, and shame covers my face. I am a foreigner to my own family, a stranger to my own mother's children. For zeal for your house consumes me, and the insult, insults of those who insult you fall on me. When I weep and fast, I must endure scorn. When I put on sackcloth, people make sport of me. Those who sit at the gate mock me, and I'm the song of the drunkards. But I pray to you, Lord, in the time of your favour, in your great love, O God, answer me with your sure salvation. Rescue me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Deliver me from those who hate me, from the deep waters. Do not let the flood waters engulf me, or the depths swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, Lord. Out of the goodness of your love, in your great mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. Come near and rescue me. Deliver me because of my foes. Let's pray. Lord, as we reflect on uh, David's um, grief and raw emotion at being mocked for his passion for you, Lord, we would look at ourselves. And Lord, I would want to say, forgive me where I have either mocked or sought to repress passion for you in others, or indeed have maybe sought to hide it in myself, where I have been ashamed of what others might think and missed an opportunity to express a mad love for you. Please forgive me and fill me once again with the burning fire of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I want to be joyful in worship, hungry in learning, fervent in prayer, generous in giving, and warm in welcome. But Lord, also forgive me for the times that I have been insensitive to others, when I should have maybe held my passion back. I want the fire of love for you to burn brightly and hotly in the fireplace, but not burn the house down. So please help me to be wise. And Lord, I pray tonight for brothers and sisters whose expressed love for you is resulting not just in mockery or humiliation, but in repression, imprisonment, and even the sentence of death. Where their faith is known, but maybe their location unknown, may you hide these brothers and sisters of ours under the shadow of your wing, from the eyes and the grasp of their persecutors. Where they are being watched, uh, maybe by the authorities or in prison, Lord, would you protect and provide for them? and for all who are persecuted in such ways today. May you pour your Holy Spirit so powerfully upon their lives as individuals, families and churches that their love for each other and their persecutors may be a passionate fire to attract so many more to your family in those communities, cities and nations.
reflecting on David's words, I am a foreigner to my family, a stranger to my own mother's children. We pray particularly for those who have come to faith and a relationship with Jesus Christ in strict Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist or communist families where they have uh, since been ostracised by parents and siblings for their new Christian faith. Lord, keep them safe, keep them loving and turn the hearts of their, of their families to you too, we pray. And Lord, as for me, fill me afresh tonight, this moment, today, with your Holy Spirit once again. Consume me with zeal for your name and your church and your glory. Amen. Now, let's pray for our, our world by saying the words of this prayer together. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us uh, once again tonight. Please tune in uh, tomorrow as well at 7pm when we're going to be going through Psalm 70 together. For now, good night. And may the peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and rest upon you. Amen.